I got the mill fired up, getting ready. I'm gonna start working on loading the second fixture and working on getting side B of these link tabs done. So I need to get the uh, vise. I have another vise I need to get indicated in here. I also have the right size drill bit now for the bolt hole. So I'm gonna change out the drill and then drill this out, change the program. Um, and I, for the second side, I've uh, got a program wrote to cut some aluminum jaws. So I need to get that all set up and I can show you. I need to get the aluminum jaws all set up and then I'll load a program, cut those, and then I'll load. I also have side B already programmed in there. So it's kind of what I'm gonna work on today. I figured I'd make a video on kind of just doing uh, some machine setup, uh, loading my program in there and then kind of getting um, this is what we're trying to make a finished product with a link tab so these got a little bit of surface rust because they were machined quite a while ago so we're getting uh some new ones made up and i've got some material all cut up so we can kind of uh, get a little production run uh ran through machine and that'll be the, this is the first parts that i've actually drawn up and will be running in the machine so um yeah kind of uh, get side a side b done today and we'll get a finished part out of there See, that's kind of what it's doing. It's going to make that profile shape in those aluminum jaws and then allow me to put that over in there to face off that lip of material there. So, I'm just letting it cut some air and then uh, it'll get back into the aluminum jaws to cut the bottom part. And uh, we should end up in the middle there with a radius matching that. And then, like, I'm up there, we've got uh, this radius here. So, Just finished cutting me a little bit of shape in these soft jaws, so I'll grab my handle here, get this vise opened up, take this little block out that I wedged in there, and you can kind of see there's some other stuff cut in these jaws, but you can see a little bit of profile, this radius that matches this radius here, and then the top radius here is cut into there. So I can flip these parts into there, come in and locate the center of this hole. That's where I have my work offset set and then run the second program over here. So, and then I should be able to get to the point of joining my programs and then being able to run op one and op two all in the same program all at the same time. Um, it's probably gonna take me a couple to get everything kind of dialed in and set up. Um, if you've been watching my stuff, my machine stuff, um, I'm still kind of working on getting this thing figured out as far as the programming and software I'm using and all that stuff. So it's kind of uh, still a work in progress, but Figured I could get these up and running while I uh, get some other stuff in the shop I'm working on. I'm doing some uh, welding on a truck and putting some parts on. So I'm going to try to get this thing running in the background. I've got all these sets uh, cut and ready here to just load in here. I just got to get uh, this side all proved out. So I just got that all made. And uh, I even had to come in here and added a little bore program to make sure my, night, my hole is uh, 
nice and straight after uh, drilling it. Um, might as well, I figure if it's in the middle, might as well make it a nice hole, so. I just finished picking up my X, Y, and Z all there using my edge finder and then using a, an end mill that was already touched off I had. I just uh, uploaded my program from my USB drive, so all ready to start uh, trying out my program. I'm sure I've been having to go back and forth through CAD software, you know, getting a few buttons clicked wrong here and there and kind of work my way through, but that is kind of what I'm doing right now is going to start running the program. Uh, I got it loaded up and ready to hit suck a start and see what we get. like that face mail program is done I ran it once and then I did have to drop it again to uh, get my thickness right so just finished uh, running that those uh, these things uh, vibrate super loud as those are ripping off uh, the little extra flap from an op one but go ahead and uh, things on optional stop right now got that flip so we'll go ahead it's waiting we can uh, turn my coolant off so I don't get blasted Okay, so I go start, should go grab our next tool, which I think is a uh, roughing end mill to do the uh, pockets. Yeah, it looks like it. So it's gonna come in and do uh, these pockets here. Um, so this is what I'm doing right now, a backside. Let's see, we'll bring that down. We'll see, I've been really checking my depths uh, quite a bit, making sure um, I'm still not like 100% confident on my tool setting and my um, data setting as far as my tool offsets and stuff go. But so this is my machining numbers. I still wish I'd like a distance to go number all the time, but only when the feed hold or slide hold is on, this comes up. So we got 7.789 more negative to go. That's the number we're at right now, 1.645 above where my Z is set, which is the top of the part there. So now, let's see, now we're 0.44, it's gotta go that more. We'll turn our uh, feed rate nice and low. So I think it's spiraling now. Um, it's gonna come in and just do a helix down in and rough that pocket out. So everything looks good. It says we're 0.342 above yet it's, and it's gonna spiral and ramp down. So I'm gonna at least shut this door in case something majorly goes wrong, but yeah, we should be able to uh, cut some pockets in. Alright, last uh, tool, the chamfer cutter. We just finished cutting the pockets there. Blow some of those out. So, came in rough and finished uh, our pockets. And then now these uh, chamfer cutters gonna come in. It should do a chamfer on the pockets and then a chamfer on the outside edge. So I just did feed hold. We'll see negative two one eight. Another. Ooh, that's fast. Turn that down a little bit. I don't even know if we're hitting, but. Barely, we're gonna have to drop that down a little bit. Yeah, that one's hitting a little bit. 
bit, but it looks like my depth's off a little bit on the chamfer cutter. Get our table moved so we can actually see our parts here. Or part. Voila! Yeah, it looks like so our chamfer cutter got our little pockets here, but I need to adjust my depth on this uh, outer edge. It did not hit that, so I'll adjust that in the program, but uh, and then come back and cut that, and then we'll pop this out. And there we have it, I've got my very first part that uh, I ran uh, op one and then did an op two. And sitting in our vise, I'll grab a uh, wrench here and break my vise free. Pop out our part, got a little coolant on there still, but nonetheless, um, yeah. Got ourselves a uh, machined uh, link tab now. Heck yeah. I'm going to get set up uh, doing op ones, op twos, get a little bit of a trial run. I have a little bit of tweaking to go on speeds and feeds, but that is uh, my very first part uh, designed that on Fusion 360 and then ran, programmed it on Fusion 360 as well. And then uh, sent it over and ran it on my Fidel DMC20. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time. Peace.